Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. Chrysler Australia made some fantastic cars from inception back in 1962 with the ahead of its time S series ending with the most refined Valiant ever made, the CM series in 1981. Who celebrates this Australian manufacturing achievement in a different way? The Hunter Valley Chrysler Club of New South Wales does. This is no faux pas, this is Mopar. And you're about to see more on this week's episode of Classic Restos. central coast of New South Wales in early August, you may find a sea of Chryslers out and about in tribute to their Australian success. These cars in Australia survived two decades of manufacturing, despite lower sales volume than the other big two. But just because the sales may have been lower does not mean they weren't great cars. Both Ford and Chrysler lost out with sales to Holden as these two were initially looked upon as the American imports. However, traditional characteristics from the USA went into building mechanically durable cars. The mighty Valiant here in Australia was one tough machine, and the Hunter Valley Chrysler Club, with around 40 devoted members, are set to keep this tradition alive, hence the introduction of the Chrysler Wake Run. Morning in remembrance of the sad day when Chrysler Australia ceased to make cars here in Australia. All vehicles under the banner of Mopar are welcome. It's a fun weekend for these guys, enjoying a Saturday mystery cruise with a mystery lunch. And then that rumbles into Saturday night as the entree for the Sunday show and shine on Canton Beach. And that's where we are right now. And here we are, what a glorious start to the 2018 Chrysler Wake Run here at Canton Beach. How are you, Brendan? Good, thanks, Fletch. So, way, mate, thank you for coming along here today. Thank you. A gorgeous 1961 Newport. This is an incredible car. It's spectacular. What's the story? Uh, the story is um, I've actually picked it up, luckily, this year from a, uh, a museum up in Newcastle, New South Wales, and... Um, was able to purchase it this year um, due to inheritance um, and um, yeah it's just been a dream come true for me it's a, been a dream for 30 odd years to own a car with big wings and um, lots of chrome and yeah I was lucky enough this year to uh, come across this car that was for sale. Now Brendan you've mentioned a very interesting angle about inheritance now I haven't gone down this road before on classic restos but this is actually uh, I guess can be a special side of things as well because because if you've got an inheritance, in this case from... From my father. Right. Okay. Isn't that nice? Because what Brennan has done with his inheritance, he's got something here that he'll always remember his dad by. And, uh, wow, uh, you're at that stage of life now where you've got this car. It's not your everyday car that you'd go and buy. This is incredibly special, Brennan. It is. It's a very special car for me. It only comes out on special occasions. Um, it's named after my father. And, um, yeah, hopefully I'll hold on to it for a very long time. What's the name? Uh, it's Wallace. Yeah, but his name was Wally, yeah, so good. Yeah. Good. yeah, I yeah. generally won't call my car by a man's name. It'll yeah. always be a lady because it's a pretty car. Absolutely. Yeah, don't worry. I'm uh, in the same boat with you, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are. I, I understand the feeling on that one. Um, okay, Brennan. Now we move on with this car, '61 Newport. Now, 1961. We are at the end of the forward look. The forward look started back in uh, in the '50s. Um, obviously, the forward look uh, stating that from their shape, they went forward in design at the front of the fenders. Here, we've started to uh, go straight down a more 
clean cut front. Um, the car in itself, in all its exuberance, it still displays the uh, the accentuated angles, like uh, around the headlights. Incredible styling. Beautiful styling, um, and it's, um, it, it certainly stands out on the road. Um, the actual the wings for me were um, something that really grabbed me. Um, I was actually in the market for a Chevrolet at the time, uh, and when I came across this car, it, it stood out. It, yeah. it was something else. Yeah. OK, we're also uh, encroaching upon the era of the uh, 413, the Max Wedge era as well. Uh, what are we running here, Brennan? We've got a uh, 361 big block in there, um, and it, uh, yeah, it, it runs very well. Yeah. Same cubic displacement as what they used to put in trucks. Yes, that's right. Yeah, not small engines. No, yeah. um, we're also, I guess, uh, well, we talk of uh, cars, uh, the Marilyn Monroe type era of car here. Uh, the styling, as Brennan has alluded to, with the fins, even inside the design with the seating area where the driver's seat is slightly higher than the passenger seat. Correct, that's right, yeah. So uh, when I bring the kids around in it, I have to kind of look back and down to see my children's heads. So they really can't really see out the windows that well when they're small children, but over the time, then when they grow up, they'll be able to see out their, their little windows. We look at that dashboard. Is there any other car that you know that's got a dash cluster quite as unique as that? No, it's certainly, uh, it's probably the nicest dash. I'm a bit biased on that, but uh, it is the nicest dash on the market yes. at, at that time, um, especially at night time when you've got the, the actual, the, the, the lights are on. Yeah. It glows and it's quite, uh, quite amazing. Tell us the paint colour, Brendan. Uh, the paint colour is actually called a Dubonon a Desert Dubonet, uh, which is... Imagine that after a few red wines. <laughs> which is a, uh, a pinkish kind of colour, metallic pink. Um, it's quite a rare colour, I believe, I've been told. Or salmon. Or salmon, correct. That's right. Much easier just to say salmon. Or pink. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think, for me, salmon personally is a bit of olive oil and the uh, Teflon pan. That's right, yeah, yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> Brendan, thank you so much for bringing this uh, incredible car along. Uh, certainly worthy, uh, not that it matters in status as to where you make it in an episode on Classic Restos, but uh, for the first interview here today, beautiful car, mate. Thanks well done. Much, Fletch. Um, it's been a pleasure. That's okay, and also in remembrance of your dad as well. Thank you. All right. Good man. Okay. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Hare and Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. And moving through from one land yacht to another. How you doing, Noel? Oh, not too bad, Fletch. Yourself? Good, mate. Good, beautiful 1967 New York. I have a go at this sitting here. This is beautiful, mate. You don't see many of these. No, mate. There's not too many in the country. There's um, three or four that I'm aware of. Um, and yeah, they're just a good, cool cruiser. It's a big block. 
it drives nice, it cruises nice, it gets up and goes, and it doesn't handle too badly for what it is, you know, so they're just good fun. Driveline is interesting. Here in this case, you've got the TNT 440, 375 horsepower from the factory. Of course, the 727 Torque Flight Auto, you've got an eight and three quarter rear. What a driveline package. Mate, it's fantastic. It's just quiet and it's smooth, but you put your foot into it and it's got a bit of poke. With the Torque Flight too being the high performance motor, yep. It's actually got the high performance torque flight as yes. well. So if you put it back into first, punch it off the line, yeah. change up almost straight away, it'll rev yeah. right out, yeah. as I found to my detriment once. So here we are buying these five star top end luxury cars with these performance packages thrown in. Yep. Back in the days of the 50s with the Hemi and the engineering from Tom Hoover and to the oh, likes. Yeah, the, the, all, the, all the Ram Charger blokes, you know, you yeah. look at the work that those blokes put into. Chrysler Engineering with the Mopar, you know, the missile, the Silver Bullet and all those cars that ran up and down Woolwood. And you're like, you know, these were the guys that were working in the factory every day, developing the engines, developing the powertrains, and then running on the streets at night, um, flying under the radar as best as they could, you know, so. And reflects Woodward Dream Cruise. What a celebration yeah, there. That's fantastic. You know, you, you look at some of the, the footage of that and, you know, up and down all day for two or three days straight, so. Well, that's where quarter mile drag racing started. It was originally from stop light to stoplight. Yep, exactly. So that's that's why they call them a stoplight derby, yeah. I suppose. So When we look at the technologies here, uh, the uh, 440 in base form in 1967, we're looking at 350 horsepower standard, which equates to 260 kilowatts these days. And if the first thing that enters your mind is, oh, a big heavy car might not go all that well, wow, you've got to think again. Because there's one word here with these big girls, and it's called torque. And if you've got plenty of torque, it pushes the mass through the air. I have to make comment on these cars, the die-cast taillights out back, the shape, how they wrap around. I just love that. I think that's a brilliant feature. Yeah. We look around the front, we still have the separate headlights carrying over from, well, to be quite honest, we haven't uh, gone away 100% from the early 60s there with some of the with the imperial models no, that's right um this car's got cornering lamps as well which is another unusual feature so when you actually the first time i was on the freeway one night i went to change lanes and suddenly i can see the whole lane next to me i didn't even realize that that feature was in the car till yeah. i went to use it one night so it illuminates the side of the road yep. in the direction of travel which way where you want to turn so. that's that's amazing yeah. there's also a button in the in uh, in the glove compartment to open the trunk lid which is uh, a vacuum operated trunk lid as well yeah i had the car for a couple of years before i even realized how that worked i thought it was an electronic solenoid <laughs> and it wasn't until i was on a forum one day and somebody mentioned it and there was a vacuum canister in under the under the uh, inner guard and i thought this is one of the first year of pollution gear in a california car so it's got a special valve for advanced retard that sort of stuff i thought it was part of that package yeah. and then somebody said no no that's the vacuum canister to operate the boot and it's actually nestled as far as you can go under the front guard so there's this massive long 17 foot long vacuum line that runs all the way to the trunk to operate a little valve no it's been fantastic catching up with you love the car all right no worries and, mate um, it's been a pleasure chatting to you yeah no worries hope to see yours on the road soon mate yes, see how we go all right, mate. Moving on through as we do. Before we go any further, how are you doing, Justin? Oh, I'm very well, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. What are your thoughts on the Chrysler Wake Run here on Canton Beach for 2018? It's a fantastic show. Loving it. Advice for you watching at home, haven't been before, what are your words? Uh, you have to get down and have a look at it, especially if you're a fan of the Chryslers and the uh, Hunter Valley Chrysler Club. Put on a great show. Yeah. Awesome words. Thank you, Justin. We have an S-Series car behind us here, 1962. Uh, now, this is a very special car as well. Uh, it's been featured before on, uh, on Shannon's Club TV, episode 31. That's correct, yes, episode 31. An original car, an original example. It's one of these ones, once again, that slipped under the radar. No one's got a hold of it since 1962. No one's mucked around with the damn thing. They've just left it alone. And boy, in 2018, isn't that nice to see? It is. It's fantastic. It's, uh, it was sold at uh, Hutchison's Chrysler dealer in November of uh, 1962 and it was owned by one family for over 50 years. It was sold on in uh, 2015 and I got hold of it in 2017. We look around the car underneath the, uh, the bonnet, little things like the original exhaust manifold still there. Yeah. Uh, everything's original under the bonnet except for the brake booster. Oh, well, I can't hold that against you. I mean, let's face it, it's more important to stop. Yeah, it's, yeah a few safety upgrades are yeah. necessary, I think. Yeah. yeah. How does it drive? Uh, we're talking 1962 technology here, an original car. Um, out on the road with all the modern traffic, how, how does it feel? 
Uh, you, it, it drives very well in modern traffic. It, it keeps up great. Uh, it stops well now with the brake booster. And uh, I surprise a lot of people at the traffic lights with how powerful this thing really is. Yeah. Uh, Justin, the slant in this year, 145 horsepower. 145 brake horsepower. Yep. Yep. And went up more in power with the two barrel. Would have been uh, AP5, AP6? Yeah, it went up to 160 horsepower with the two barrel carburetor. Yep. Justin, thanks for, for coming along, mate. It's uh, great to interview people with their cars, as it always is, but we go back to the beginning here. This is where it all started with Valiant here in Australia. Of course, we, uh, we had the R-Series. They sold 1,008 of those, uh, the direct American import. They sold like hotcakes, and that was uh, Chrysler Australia's inspiration to then go ahead and build the Mighty S-Series. So um, you've done the fraternity proud. Justin? Thank you very much, Fletch. Thanks, mate. Thank you. And if you have anything to do with a classic bike, a classic car or a classic truck club, make sure that it's listed with the Shannons Club for all the world to see. For more information, go to shannons.com.au. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go. So Shannon's laid-up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. Moving through this wonderful show, it's time now for Joe Anzini and his collection. How are you doing, Joe? I'm very well, thank you, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, you represent the Row of Devotion. Now, this is what Fletch has termed this because you're the only guy at this event that actually brings five vehicles. Yes, I have. I brought five today. Okay. Uh, I brought the Dodge Truck, the Dodge Ute, the Dodge Charger, the Plymouth Cuda and a Dodge Phoenix. So there's no doubt about it, Joe, when you fell out of the Mopar tree, you hit every branch on the way down and a big thud at the bottom. Absolutely. You're not wrong there. I think it's nice, too, that two of the cars get hauled along by the classic Dodge truck here. I love these things. I remember as a kid in the Sutherland Shire growing up in, in Sydney, they, they were used uh, as brick trucks everywhere. Yeah, but I still trucks. remember the brick trucks with each individual brick loaded by hand. Yes, absolutely. I remember seeing those trucks myself. They were loaded by hand, unloaded by hand. A lot of hard work. Now, Joe, we've got a standard four-speed gearbox here and the legendary 318 V8. 318 V8, correct, yes. And the new process four-speed. Wow. OK, Joe, tell us about the Dodge Ute. Uh, the Dodge Ute was uh, originally owned by some concreters from Kemp's Creek. Um, it was purchased from the gentleman that I bought the vehicle from, where he basically got it to that standard now. Uh, I only finished off the interior and put the 18-inch wheels on it. Other than that, um, it's, it was all uh, repainted, already ready to go when I bought it. Okay, time for the big bad charger. What's the deal there? Okay, the big Dodge charger. Um, I purchased that uh, from the, a lady who imported it into Australia. 
Uh, was it the lady that put the big wheels on the back, Joe? No, I believe the big wheels uh, were on the vehicle when it came into Australia. Yeah, I was about to say, she had to get to the supermarket fast. Yeah, yeah she sure did, and she certainly had the right car to do that, because <laughs> it gets up and goes. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Okay, so uh, what have you done to the car since you've had it? The only thing I've done to it is basically detuned the motor, uh, replaced the torque converter, because it had a 5,000 stall in it. Uh, <laughs> while the engine was out, I fully detailed the engine bay, so it's all nice and clean and tidy. Okay, the Cuda is next. What's the deal there? Okay, that's a 73 uh, Plymouth Cuda, uh, 340 four-speed. Um, the only work that I've done to that is replace the floor in it. It had a bit of rust, mm -hmm. a lot of rust. Yeah. So we cut the whole floor out, put a whole new floor in it, and um, just enjoying it. The Phoenix, what have you done there? Okay, the Dodge Phoenix, I actually purchased that 20 years ago. It was a hard top, pillarless hard top, um, 383 big block. And I was so much in love with convertibles, I had it converted to a convertible and um, did all the interior up. Uh, I originally had a set of 20 inch wheels on it, but um, I couldn't put that on the special registration. So I had to take the 20 inch wheels off and I put the standard wheels back on it, which looks very smart. Yeah. That's awesome, Joe. It's also good to, to see that you stand for the Sydney Mopar Cruisers as well. It's a club that's uh, not that old, so obviously you're uh, encouraging people with Mopars to join the club. Yes, absolutely. Um, our club is only four years young. Uh, and yes, I do encourage a lot of people to, to come along to car shows and charity shows and events because um, it's all about um, raising money for especially this event here for the Special Olympics, uh, which the Hunter Valley Chrysler Club do a great job on. Good on you, mate. Absolutely. Always good catching up with you, Joe. You thanks, Fletch. Time now for Man of the Moment, Bill Rigby. How are you, Bill? Yeah, good, thanks, Fletch. So, hey, mate, you're excited, aren't you? Well, yeah, it's over. Jumping out of your skin. Yep. Uh, you play an integral part, Bill, the Hunter Valley Chrysler Club and the... Uh, Chrysler Wake Run for 2018, another big year, possibly one of your biggest. Congratulations. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, about uh, 115, a little bit over 115, 120 cars. Yeah. So just a good weekend all round. Now, I wanted to end on today's show with this beautiful VIP. Love these VIPs. You don't see many of them around. They ran from VE right through. Now, yours is a 71, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Okay, tell us about the car, or what, what you can, anyway. Okay, I uh, saw it down at Chrysler the Murray a year and a half ago. Um, thought it was a good idea to buy a car that we thought was a one owner or near enough to a one owner. Yep. Yep. I love these five star cars. Mm. I've said many times they sneak under the radar. A bit of a favourite saying that I have because it's quite true because a lot of emphasis goes to type other types of cars. But these high end cars, these low mileage cars, have great packages nice engines, transmissions, drive lines, and you've got all the creature comforts as well in the interiors. Now, when we look at this uh, VF, it's interesting what they did. It's just like a, it's a VF Valiant with the longer back door. Um, it's uh, similar to what, what's what Ford did with Fairlanes, and uh, I, I just love what they, they did with the VIP. It's a very styly car. Mm. Yeah, I think they tried to compete with the Statesman and a few others, yep. Yeah. Um, it's interesting too, back in 71, they highlight a five-star car. When you look at the dashboard, uh, as opposed to a standard Valiant, the VIP, well, you get a clock. <laughs> yeah, we get a clock, but we do have an air conditioning cluster there. That's pretty special. That is. <laughs> we look at the interior, we look at the seats, and, and when you have a, a good look uh, and just stare at things for, for, for a while, uh, you appreciate how nice this car is. The floor carpets are in good condition. Again, another advantage of the high-end cars, they're not the type of cars that used to pull the caravans around or put all the family in as a daily hack, and I think that's why we've come so far and we've got what's left of these cars in such good condition. Yep, I think it was more of a businessman's car with the column shift auto. Mm. Yep. The condition of it when you got it, uh, it mustn't have been that crash hot. Uh, not really. Um, had a few dents in it. Uh, got hit by a pole and a few other things. It got hit by a pole? Yeah. 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 The pole didn't hit it? No. Apparently not. No. Well, <laughs> this is what happens too, uh, especially too with all due respect, we sometimes have our, uh, our senior members have these cars as well and they get to a point in life where they park by nudge. Mm. Yeah, there was a few shop and trolley dents <laughs> right around the car. Alright Bill, uh, back here at the Chrysler Wake Run for 2019, uh, I guess uh, even bigger than this year. Yeah, hope so. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we get weather like this. Good on you mate. Alright, well keep up the good work, uh, congratulations with it, thank all you. Right. Thanks Fletch. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers mate. The VIP. I like them.
because they're a car that's a little bit different and of course quite rare. They went head to head, took on the Holden Braum and of course the Ford Fairlane. They were the flagship model for Chrysler Australia and they ran in production for four years up to the introduction of the Chrysler by Chrysler with the VH Valiant shape. Well, there you have it. That's a wrap. This week's episode of Classic Restos. It's a big hats off to Bill and Julie Rigby and the Hunter Valley Chrysler Club of New South Wales for putting the 2018 Chrysler Wake Run together. Check social media pages for next year's event. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching the show from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.